Alright, so first let's talk about the intricacies of getting data from memory into secondary storage using output files. Um, we're just going to cover 9.2 from the focus part of this chapter. Alright, so there are four steps to output data from your program into secondary storage. The first thing you do is you declare a stream writer variable. This is a uh, type of object that will actually help you get data into secondary storage. More on that in a sec. Uh, then you actually open up the file that you want to write data into. And then you write data into the file. And then you close the file. Uh, so those are the four steps. You have to do those four steps in order. But they are the four pretty simple steps that you need in order to actually get data into a file like that. All right, so the first thing we do is we create a stream writer variable. So this is going to hold a stream writer object, which will actually help us, um, you know, make the file that we're trying to write to and then actually write data to that file. But that's what it does. It just, the stream writer writes data to a file and you would declare it as you would any other um, variable. So dim or private, depending on if you're doing a procedure or class variable. And then whatever your variable name is, as uh, the type is actually going to be io.streamwriter, which is a little bit weird. Um, I believe it's the first time we've seen something like this, but what this is saying is IO is a, is what's known as a library. Um, a library like IO holds a whole bunch of classes of objects and methods and stuff like that, that you're able to use in order to get extra functionality, but they separate it away from all of the regular, um, you know, classes and methods and properties and stuff that you're regular, that you're usually able to use. Uh, because essentially Visual Basic doesn't want to include all of that superfluous extra stuff if it doesn't have to. And so if you don't ever specify that you're using the um, IO class by, you know, declaring something from the IO class, it's not going to include all of that in your application because if it included all that ne unnecessarily, it would just give you a whole bunch of extra bloat and make your application run slower and make it be like larger and all that kind of stuff. It's just not necessary at all. But when you say that you specifically need the IO library and specifically the stream writer member of the IO library, then that tells Visual Basic to use it. So what this says right here is you are asking Visual Basic to include, uh, you know, go to the IO library and then using the dot access operator, uh, it at, it says to use the stream writer class as the type for this variable. So that's just what's going on right here. An example that you might have in your own program is uh, dim out file as io.streamwriter. So you have this out file variable as an empty stream writer variable. It doesn't actually have a stream writer object in it yet. It's completely empty. If you try to use it right now, nothing will happen. So it's just a variable that is ready to hold onto an object, but it doesn't have an object to hold onto just yet. So in order to give your stream writer variable an object to hold onto, you actually have to open the file. Um, you have to actually tell Visual Basic to open up the text file that you want to write to and then create a stream writer holding onto that text file that you then can pass data to so that it will write that data into the text file. Um, there are two different modes that you can actually open a file in though. And the real difference between the two is what happens if you try to open a file that already exists. So the idea with opening files is that you pass in a file name that the uh, 
program will try to create the file for, but what happens if there already exists some text file with that exact file name? That's where the difference in the two modes actually comes in. So the first mode is what's known as create mode. Uh, you create a blank file with a specified name that you pass in when you're actually creating your um, stream writer object, when you're actually trying to open the file. Uh, if a file with that name already exists, you delete it first. So you get rid of a file, any file that already has that name in that location that you're trying to create the file in. You get rid of that pre-existing file and then you create an empty one with nothing in it. And then you prepare to add text starting at the beginning of that first line in the file. So it's an empty file, but it's ready to add text in and start creating the first line. Uh, so when you actually start putting in data into the empty file, it will start adding in at the first line of the file. Now the other mode of opening a file is known as append mode, which is designed to open an existing file with the specified name. So if you pass in a file name, let's say you're trying to open a file called highscores.txt. If highscores.txt already exists, rather than deleting it and creating a new blank file called highscores.txt, which you would with create mode, instead append mode actually opens up highscores.txt and then prepares to add text at the very end. So after the previous, after the end of the last line, it will start adding text, you know, at the end. So if highscores.txt, the original one, ended with a new line and then nothing else, well, then you would start adding text onto that next line. However, if it didn't add with a new line, if it ended with um, a period because it was ending a sentence or something like that, you would start adding text after that period. So if you're working with append mode like this, you do actually have to be careful to make sure that you, um, you know, when you actually write a file and then save all of that data, you're setting yourself up so that you're not running into trouble with, you know, writing things on the same line or stuff like that. If you don't want to write things on the same line, you have to end it with a new line so that you can start writing on the next line or something like that. You have to sort of format it the way that you might format uh, a particular line in a labels text field. How you um, put new lines at the end of every line in a labels text field in order to make sure that the next line you append to that label is not going to look really weird but yeah uh the append mode you pass it a file name of a file that you think already exists and if that file does exist uh then visual basic will open it up and put all the text that you write into that file at the end of all the pre-existing text however if that file you know if a file with that name does not exist then it will create it uh just create a new blank file with that file name functioning in that case the same as create mode. So if you want to open files in create mode, you would use the um, io.file.createText method and you pass in the file name that you want to pass in. Uh, so for example, outfile equals io.file.createText passing in the string employee.text. This would create a new blank file called employee.txt um, and it would delete the uh, pre-existing employee.txt if such a file existed, but it would create employee.txt uh, in your project folder. And then once it's created that file, it also you know creates a stream writer object that holds onto that file and then sets that stream writer object into the out file variable that we defined previously. So now out file holds a stream writer object that is interfacing with the employee.txt file. And by the way, I realized I just completely forgot to mention this. IO right here stands for input output. So IO is the library that handles input and output 
uh, regarding your program. All right, so opening files is very similar, but instead of using the create text method of io.file, you use the append text method of io.file. So you say out file equals io.file.append text, and then you pass in the file name that you want to append text to the end to, of rather than, you know, completely obliterate and then create from scratch. But both the uh, create text and append text methods like this, um, probably you would be using these in separate lines of code from the actual variable declaration because, you know, you should be declaring your variables at the, uh, you should be declaring them at the beginning of your procedures, or you should be declaring them inside of your class definition itself outside of procedures, but like above all of the procedures, right? But you don't want to open files using create text or append text necessarily at the beginning of all of your procedures and you definitely don't want to open them outside of any procedures. These should only be uh, used inside of procedures and they should only be used as you know at exactly the moment that you are trying to um, that you are trying to actually open these files. You don't want to open them at the very beginning of the procedure and then just hold on to them if you're only using them at the very end. Uh, and the reason why is because opening files like this actually takes up resources and lower powered computers can actually struggle if you have too many of these types of resources being taken up. You want to open them as soon as you are ready to use them and not a moment sooner. Uh, so pretty much you open them at the last possible second. So. 99% of the time, this means that you're going to declare your streamwriter variable at the very top of the procedure, and then later on in the procedure, open the file using create text or append text um, directly before you start actually writing stuff to it. So that's really important. I really want to make sure that you always open your file inside of procedures, not outside of procedures, inside of them, and you only open them as soon as they are needed, not a moment sooner. All right, so no matter what mode you use when you opened up the file, uh, the next thing you have to do is actually write data, and you use the write method of your stream writer variable, passing in a string that contains the data that you want to write, and it just stores the string contained, uh, you know, the string argument that you passed in exactly as is. So the exact characters that you type in are going to be put into the uh, actual text. And that distinction is pretty important. So for example, let's say I have two lines of code, one right after the other, where first I, um, you know, I take my out file variable, my out, my out file uh, stream writer variable, and I invoke its write method passing in the string hello. And then I do the next line, I pass in the string blah to the write method. So I've called write twice, passing in hello first and blah next. What do you think the um, actual context uh, or contents of out file will be? after I run both of these lines of code. Uh, try to think about it, what you think they might be for a second, but remember, uh, it is storing the data exactly as is. Well, the results of running these two lines is going to be putting hello blah into the file. Uh, there's no new line, there's no space, there's nothing like that. It just puts hello exactly as is, and then blah exactly as is. Um, so it doesn't do anything fancy like that. So the result is a text file that you can open up in Notepad and it will just say hello blah. It doesn't even have the quotes, by the way. It just has the word hello blah with a capital H and a capital B. As is. In fact, it would, w it would look exactly like this. 
hello blah. Nothing after it, nothing between hello and blah. No quotation marks, nothing like that. So if you want to actually add new lines between hello and blah, you have to add them in yourself, such as by concatenating a new line after hello, and maybe even a new line after blah if you're expecting to write more things after blah, but you actually have to add them in. Now the write method is really nice because you can write multiple times per output line, so you don't have to write everything in the line all at once. You can write part of a line and then you can do some calculation to figure out what you need to actually stick in the line next, write that in there, and then write the next part of the line, maybe do some more calculations, write that in there, and then finally write the end of the line, and then put a new line at the end of that manually. So it gives you that huge amount of control. However, what you can also do is you can just build up your entire line as a string, and then write that entire string. Which is actually really beneficial because writing data to files is a lot slower than actually just doing string concatenation. It's not slower by much these days because computers are pretty fast. So really you can do whichever one you want, but if you're a traditionalist, then you can create your, um, you can create your string that's going to hold the line of output that you want to write. And then once you have assembled the entirety of that line of output, then you can write it to the file in one write and not have to keep on calling the write method over and over and over again. Uh, so the write method has its upsides and downsides, and it really depends on if you like uh, being able to write multiple times per out output line, or if you would rather write one line at a time. And the fact that you have to put in the new lines is a little bit annoying to you. Um, so if you are in the second camp, then the other writing method might be uh, more up your alley. So the other method that we can use to write data is the write line data. So what you do is you pass in your string uh, and then it concatenates that string together with a new line character using control chars at new line. Uh, and then stores that whole thing in the file. So when I write, when I call write line and then pass in hello, and then I call write line and pass in blah, the result of that is actually going to be hello, blah, and then a new line at the very end of that. So every time I call write line, it puts a new line at the end of the text that I uh, put in the string argument. So my example would look a lot like this, where you have hello on its new line, and then this new line right here would end at this position at the end of my call to right line when I passed in hello. And then my second call to right line, where I passed in blah, it would actually put blah into the file and then add a new line, which then brings the cursor down here, right? But that new line is kind of sitting down here. And if I were to add anything else into the file, then it would start showing up on the next line after blah, as opposed to if I used um, the regular write uh, method and adding more text would just add it directly after the H in blah with no space or anything like that. So that's what that looks like right here is just hello, on its own line, blah, on its own line, and then a, a new line after blah, so that a third line is ready to go in the file. So the nice thing about this method is that you can build all of your lines as strings and then use write line to write the entirety of the line to the file at once, and then write line also handles putting the new line at the very end for you, so you don't even need to concatenate that into your line string. However, you have to be careful with it because the automatic new line can cause errors. For example, if you're trying to write uh, multiple things that are all supposed to be on the same line, if you use write line for all of those little pieces, they're going to end up on their own line and that might cause errors in terms of the output of your file. So you have to be careful. Make sure you're using write exactly when you need to 
and make sure you're using right line exactly when you need to. If you want to be careful about that, really, really careful about that, instead of using right line, you could only use right and then put the uh, new line character in yourself when you want to. Uh, otherwise, if you want to do multiple rights, but then still use right line when you want to finish up a line, then for all of the individual rights that you're doing, except for the last one, you use the right method and then the last segment of the line, you just use right line to just finish things off. That's up to you. However, it makes sense to you to uh, actually handle your output like that. But make sure that you're carefully checking your output files because if your output files are formatted incorrectly, that could be really bad. Especially if you're then using those same output files as input files again, if you're keep continuing to modify the same file over and over and over again, you really want to make sure that you're outputting things correctly so that you're not causing errors when you're reading things in. That can be a problem when it comes to learning how to write files like this for the first time. Uh, another pitfall that can happen is not, uh, you know, if your program is supposed to take in input and also give out output, if you don't uh, follow the instructions for the exercise on how to format your output files, then you can cause a lot of errors and lose a lot of points, both because your output files aren't being formatted correctly and because your input files are throwing errors due to the improperly formatted output files. So be very careful to f exactly output your files the way that the instructions tell you to, because it can cause disaster. Trust me on this. Uh, that is probably the, the number one student pitfall that I see is not following the instructions for how files should be input and output from programs. You can lose a lot of points that way. All right, and then the last step is to close your file. You use the dot close method for your stream writer variable as soon as you're done writing files. So you always want to close your files when you're not using them because of the fact that computers use resources to hold files open. Uh, for really bad computers, this can actually be a, a roadblock. Um, this can prevent people from being able to use your application. So you always close your files as soon as you're done writing data to them. Not sooner, not later. The last thing you do is you close your file. Or sorry, well, yeah, the, the, um, the last thing you do when you're working with your file is you close the file, but you do it as soon as possible and not a moment later. And that just helps keep things a lot more efficient. All right, so this is an application that essentially just, uh, you know, it's meant to help out a game show. It's meant to just record the names of contestants that are going to be actually participating in that game show. So that, you know, you write down a contestant name, Iris, oh, Iris Kohler, just like that. And then you click write to file. Um, and I'm not going to handle read from file here. I'm not going to handle this contestants things yet. Uh, all we're going to focus on right now is just writing to the file. Um, but that's the idea, is you just write things to the file. I can also write uh, Marley Stinkhead. That's her full name, legal. Uh, I checked her birth certificate. Um, write that to the file as well, and then I can also, of course, exit. So that's what the application itself is doing. So when I actually type in a name and click the right button, um, it's a very simple uh, actual application right here. What it's doing is it's just writing a name to the sequential access file. So it declares a stream writer variable. Uh, then it opens that file that we actually want to store information in, in append mode. It opens it to append data to the existing File. And it specifically is trying to uh, append data to the file contestants.txt. 
Uh, and you see right here, we have the difference between the uh, declaration and the actual um, creation of the variable like this. Uh, and then it will write the name on its own line. So it trims the name, uh, writes out the name as a string, of course, because this is the text property. Uh, but it's using the write line method, which means that it's going to stick a new line at the very end. Uh, so every individual entry is going to have its um, own line, essentially. And then immediately, as soon as it's done, it closes the file. This is really good to do. You always want to close any files that you're no longer using. Uh, and then uh, this extra stuff, like clearing out the contestants box and setting the focus and all that kind of stuff. But notice right here, even though uh, we keep on using the same file, it always declares the variable inside of the procedure because we're only using this out file variable within button right. We are only writing to the file in button right underscore click right here. We're never writing anywhere else and we won't use out file for actually reading from a file because that's a completely different thing. We don't use a stream uh, writer to read from a file. So we'll never use it in any other functions right here. And we'll cover that kind of stuff uh, later on. But uh, we declare out file as a procedure scope variable and we open the file every single time we run the procedure. We don't leave it as a class variable because we don't want to hold on to that file when we're not doing anything with it. An individual act of opening, writing, and closing, it is a little bit expensive, a little bit inefficient. Like if you think about it in terms of like, oh, well, we keep on opening it just to write once and then close it. But in the long run, it's actually a lot more efficient to open it, write once, and close it than it is to open it and then keep it open a very, 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 very long time and then close it. Uh, opening, writing, and closing is going to take uh, in somewhere between you know nanoseconds and milliseconds, probably closer to the nanoseconds side of things. Um, it's still going to be a lot faster, whereas holding it open will mean resource usage for seconds, minutes, God forbid, hours. So we always want to open right, you know, right before we write and then do our writing as efficiently as possible and then close immediately after we are done writing. And then we do whatever other calculations we have left afterwards. But we close, we open immediately before writing and we close immediately after writing. And then everything else that doesn't need to take place in between the final write and close, you know, all that will happen after the close. Uh, there are, there may be times where operations need to happen in between individual calls to write or to write line. Um, and that's fine uh, if you're working on your problem like that. But you don't want to put things between the final call to write or write line and the call to close if you can at all help it. Now you might notice that I've just put the name of the file right here, contestants.txt, but we don't actually have any information on when, you know, where that file is actually located. Well, this file is actually going to be located in the same area that the, um, the, the application executable is when you actually run, you know, start like this and you make a debug build of your application or if you're making some uh, finalized version of an application for a professional setting, you know, you do release right here and it will, uh, the application will live there. But you know, the debug version has its own home within your project file and that's actually where your contestants.txt file is going to live. So if you are in your um, solution folder like this with the .sln file and your project folder, you'll want to end up in your project folder. Now, sometimes uh, Visual Basic does give you the 
the uh, option to put your solution folder inside of your project folder. So the solution folder goes in with all of this type of stuff. But uh, no matter what, you want to be in the project folder, in the same folder as all of your VB and VB proj uh, files like this. Then you'll want to go to bin and then debug. And that's where your um, text files are going to be. And I showed off the example where I put in my own name as well as Marley's name. Uh, and that's what contestants.txt would look like after I um, put in my name and then put in Marley's name. But that's where that is. You go into your project folder right here, and, the, and then you go to the bin folder, uh, short for binary. Uh, and then you go to debug. And then any text file that you create like this is going to show up right there next to the exe file. All right, well, that is our discussion of output files. Um, it's a pretty simple process, actually, writing data into a file. So uh, it's also very, very helpful. If you have these crazy complications that you want to save, you can just output them straight to a file. Um, and if you just put in the name of the file, like what I did, or like what I showed off before, um, then that will be located next to your exe file inside of your debug folder. Now what's important to note, I should specify, is that when you are specifying your file name, you should always specify the file name .txt. You should always use .txt unless you're told otherwise, but you should assume that you need to use a .txt file extension, and this tells Windows that you are making a text document, a regular text document. If you don't have an extension, Windows will not know what kind of file it is, and it might try to freak out if you try to open that file. But .txt, Windows knows it can handle it. It will just set it to open by default using Notepad and everything is great. So that's our discussion on output files right there.